What's going on everyone? You're back with your boy Jono for another quick math lesson. Today we're going to have a look at how to interpret and create line and bar graphs. So one of the big mistakes that a lot of students make in maths and science is using these interchangeably. These are our two most common types of graph, but most common does not mean, oh, I can just pick any one, whichever one I like more. There is a specific set of rules for when you can use a line graph and when you can use a bar graph. And making sure you're on top of this will always get you one or two marks in maths and science. So this is transcending just the maths classroom. So when we're trying to decide whether or not we could use a line graph, the one question I want you to ask yourself is, hey, if I just picked a number in between two of my dots, two of my actual data points, would that number make sense? If yes, then a line graph is appropriate. We're using continuous number sets for these ones. So if there is a scale that continues up without really breaking, then a line graph is going to be what you want to use. So this will work really well anytime you're measuring something. So if you're measuring height, right, you could have someone that's 170 centimeters and 170.5 centimeters. So these are continuous. The other thing we could look at is like CO2 levels in the atmosphere. It makes sense that we're not going to measure every single day, but we could guess in between two data points what the answer would be. So we're just going to do a really quick example. Please don't copy how I've done this graph. It's very uh, hastily done, but we're going to look at how tall you are based on what year group you're in. And we're just taking the average mark. So someone in year seven could be 140 centimeters, someone in year eight, 150 centimeters, and on and on. Would it make sense if I was like, hey, how tall were you halfway through year seven? We could go up onto that graph and probably guess you were about 145 centimeters. This makes sense, so a line graph is appropriate. Then, if you wanna do a bar graph, the complete opposite is true. You've gotta determine, hey, if I put a point in between my data sets, right, in between what I know for sure, if it doesn't make sense, then you can use a bar graph. So we're usually dealing with discrete categories. So this means definitely different things that we assign something to that's not a number. So examples of this is anything that is categorical. So we're talking about favorite sports, favorite colors, artists, whatever. So again, I'm gonna do a really quick graph. Let's say that I interviewed people about their favorite color. They could pick yellow or red, right? What's your favorite out of those two colors? In this graph, I had five people that liked yellow and 12 people that liked red. If I wanted to use a line graph, I would be saying that if I picked a point in between at random, that would make sense. But for this, I'm sure that eight people don't love yellowy red as their favorite color. That's not what the question was asking. It's yellow or red. So that means a line graph's not appropriate because these are discrete. The middle doesn't count. So a bar graph would be way more appropriate. So when you are making graphs, you get marks from six places. And the best thing for you is only one of those marks is actually about doing it correctly. The rest of it is making sure that it's set out well so you can really communicate what the data is saying to the audience. So the first one is that you have to label the two axes, right? The two up and downs, the vertical and horizontal. You must label these and put the units in. You also have to write a title so that someone could quickly look at the graph and know exactly what we're talking about. So those two things straight away get you a mark. The next thing is that we need the correct variable on the correct axis. So the Y axis is the dependent variable. It's usually what we are recording. And the X axis is called the independent variable. And that's what we're manipulating. So time usually goes at the bottom because you're manipulating how long your experiment's going. The second thing is that the scale is consistent. So every time you put a dash on your graph, it's going up by the same amount. That number can be whatever you want. It could be going up by 50s, 100s, whatever, but it's gotta be going up by the same amount every single time. And then we also need the size to be reasonable. If you do a really, really small graph, you will lose a mark, unfortunately. And if you do one that's bigger than an A4 piece of paper, your teacher's probably gonna take a mark off you. So just make sure that it takes up the right amount of space. Number five, this is the actual one that matters. Hey. Did you get the numbers correct? So that's the only mathsy part about this. This is the only mark that you get for doing the maths correctly. So it seems like a pretty good deal for me. And then the last one, six, is that it's neat. You've used a ruler, right? You've joined up the dots of your line graph in a way that makes sense. So just taking a little bit of time and a little bit of pride when you're doing it 
we'll get you a mark 100%. So we're gonna do a line graph example looking at people's height at certain ages. As we kind of expect, as you get older, the height increases. This would probably be an average from a year group at your school. So the first thing we've got to do is make sure that we are putting in our axes and our variables, and we need to label these. So the age is what we're manipulating. We're looking at 11 year olds, then 12 year olds, then 13 year olds. So what we're looking at changes. So that goes on the bottom. And we just have to make sure that we put age in years. We're not talking about months. That would not make any sense, but you do just have to tell me that it is in years. That means what we are recording goes on the y-axis and that's height in centimeters. So once you've got those two things down, tick, you got a mark. We also need a title for a graph. You could say people's height at different ages. That's fine as long as you're telling the audience what it's about in very clear terms, you'll get a mark. Next thing we've got to do is make sure that all our dashes are evenly spaced out. If you've got a graph book, I would highly recommend just going up by a box every time, it's an easy way to make sure you get the mark fully correct. If not, just use a centimeter on your ruler. So we're gonna do the bottom one first, that makes the most sense. The categories we've got are 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So we just have to put those up. Because the scale is just one year each time, we can just put 11, 12, 13, done. So the scale is going up by the same amount, one year, and they're evenly spread. This whole bottom section's done. Going up on the height section is a little bit harder. Some people want to start at zero centimeters and then go all the way up to like 200 centimeters, but then you're only using a really small part of the graph. Because our lowest number is 125 centimeters, I would start at 120 centimeters. That's totally fine. Our biggest number is 159 centimeters, so we could probably go up to 160. Each time we could go up by 10 centimeters, and on every dash we'll go from 120 130, 140, 150, 160, and this is totally fine. Each jump is 10 centimeters, and it's going up by one box every time, full marks. Again, this isn't the only way you could do it. You could do 50 centimeters, you could do 20 centimeters, but I just like to make sure the data is very obvious, and starting at a number close to the bottom and close to the top just makes sense for me. Now, here's the one mark that we get for actually putting the numbers in correctly. At 11, we've got to go up to 125, put a dot there, full marks. Then, as we go to 12, 132, put a dot there. Just make sure it's a little bit over that 130 number, you're gonna get it right. 13, 141, same thing. Make sure you're just a bit over the 140, then 152, 159, and then we've got to make sure we connect all the dots, not using a ruler, we don't want jagged straight lines, just in a nice flowing way, and that will get you the mark 100%. Some students do try to connect it to the bottom or to that x-axis down the bottom. Please don't do this. We don't have the data to say for sure what these would be. So you can just ignore it. So those two red lines, you don't need them. Having a line that's just kind of floating through space is totally fine. And now we're done. That was probably a four, five, six mark question depending on your school. And it wasn't very hard at all. The only thing that's tough is taking the time to actually set it out correctly. The maths is not hard, and I think you can do it 100%. Now we're just going to do a bar graph example. I've surveyed people about their favorite color, and we've just got to do the exact same steps. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure the axes are labeled correctly. So we're going to have the categories down the bottom, that's the color, and then always the frequency goes up on this y-axis. So that's something that's really, really easy to remember. Frequency on the y-axis, 100% of the time. So we just got to make sure that our jumps are correct. We start pretty low and then go up to 31. So I would go from zero to 40, jumping up 10 every time. Again, you could do fives, you could do 20s, whatever, but I think 10 makes the most sense. Again, each dash is one box up, just so that scale is consistent for the whole time. And then for the bottom, just make sure that these are spread out correctly. We've got red, we've got yellow, we've got blue, we've got green. That's totally fine. We just have to make sure that they are spread out evenly. The order doesn't really matter either. You can go in ascending order if you want to, but it does not matter. I would just read them off the table. So there's no way that your teacher could go, oh, you mixed them up. Just 
copy what's on the table. So the way that I do my bar graphs, and I would recommend doing this, is that at each frequency number that we've got. So for the reds at 14, I like to put a horizontal line with my ruler down. I've done it a bit scrappy on this, but if you just do that horizontal line there, you will get this right. Then I go to the next category, 22 on green, horizontal line. Seven on yellow, horizontal line. 31 on red, horizontal line. This just means that my bars won't be like knocking into each other as I do them. And it'll just allow me to kind of see as I'm doing it, what they should look like. From here, you just have to go up, across and down using a ruler. I know I haven't, but the ruler on my app kind of sucks. But if you go up, across with a ruler, you'll get a mark every time. You can color it in if you want to, that's totally fine, doesn't really matter. But as long as you've got those bars standing right up to the correct number, looking neat, you'll get the mark. And because I am science trained, I like to have the bars separate from each other, but you, I don't think you'd lose a mark if you have them right next to each other. Just kind of do whatever your teacher says during your lesson. As long as the data is clear and easy to follow along with, you'll get these right every single time. This is a skill that will take you all the way up to year 12. So if you learn how to do this now in year seven or eight, you're just gonna keep banking marks over and over again in maths and science, which means you probably won't have to work as hard, which is a great thing. Thanks so much for watching guys, and I'll see you later.